Optics World Studio Tour. Exciting tour set up for you guys today. It's going to be a good one. We love taking you all around the world to different studios where we can see how the different ways video producers are setting up their studios to create live streams just like this one. Yeah, so without further ado, shall we introduce our special guest for today? Yeah, so uh, we actually have a little reveal that we wanted to play to reveal the special guest that we have. Uh, this should be quite entertaining. We had to have something fun planned for this one today. So we, we hired an artist to, to do uh, the best rendition they could of the uh, streaming idiot. That, if you do not know, is Tom Sinclair. Thanks, Jim Moline, for sending this clip to us. So fun. And, of course, via VMix call, we are now joined with Tom Sinclair. Hi, Tom. Good day, folks. I tell you what, what an amazing way to, uh, to be brought into a show. That was obviously my best, uh, my best side that you guys saw right there. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Thank mm. goodness you're much more mm. handsome than that in person. <laughs> well, virtually in person. Virtually in person. But, hey, we're going to have a chance to, uh, to hang out a little bit in 60 days. We will be at NAB in Las Vegas. That's crazy. And That's going to be, be the a... ultimate mashup. It's going to be so so much fun. And I hope you guys have come out to the Streaming Idiots meet up on Tuesday night. Very much yeah. looking forward to that. Yeah, it's already on our schedule. It will we'll be, be there. the party of the week. Yeah. yeah. Imagine okay. all the selfies Good. I'm going to get. <laughs> Well, there should be, I think we're expecting about 100, so you just never what? know. It's going to be a, a great opportunity. What I mean, will I wear? It'll be, a ton of, it'll be a ton of your audience. I mean, because we share the same audience. We, yes, we, we do. We have many, many folks in common because we, people that are interested in streaming are out there. They're saying, okay, I want to, I want to get some of this. I want to get some of that. I want to get some of this other. And I want to find all these different ways to learn about streaming. And Paul mm -hmm. and Tess are doing some cool things. And Tom's doing some boring mm -hmm. stuff, but that's all right. You know, Not he, true. he's, he's kind of handling this end of it. Um, and, and so when they come to Las Vegas, it'll be a great opportunity for all of them to meet in the same place and meet each other and meet us and there's it's just there's just something about live live you know that's that's the fun part and is there so a place where we can send people to sign up or register or something for that event that you'd like to plug go to the facebook streaming idiots group okay it's an event on that group and they can say if they're coming or not yep yep that's and, sure uh, to be a you fun don't have one. to wear a costume it does you don't have this is not a costume event um Although you we can wear a banana, banana guy there last year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, in fact, the VMix guys had said if anybody would wear a, v a banana to NAB, they would give them a free copy of VMix. Ooh, that's and worth somebody it. Somebody showed up in a banana outfit. Yes, indeed. That well, is I don't think funny. that's good for this year. I think it was just last year. Yeah, that's <laughs> so already if, been if done. If I come dressed as a PTZ Optics camera, will you give me a camera? <laughs> I would. Yeah, I think so. I think we can vouch for that. Oh, wow. Okay. Don't All you just right. have a closet the full of them, though? <laughs> Tom, you're going to have to pay for Zoom for us, though. No, of PTZ cameras, <laughs> PTZ optics cameras. <laughs> um, I, I have a few stacked up in the studio, yeah. Yep. Some of them are sitting around waiting for this. There, there's actually this rumor out there that there's, there's this neat new um, firmware that will turn your PTZ Optics camera into a pumpkin. And <laughs> it's supposed to be released any day now. No, 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 no. Just he to, had to go uh, there. But I do, have, I do have a bunch of cameras sitting around waiting to be updated uh, to the new firmware and to the NDI upgrade, which is mm -hmm. gonna be available momentarily, I think. I think that there was one so model in particular that, that yeah. was holding things up. Yeah, we have a meeting uh, next Tuesday to discuss the uh, final, final firmware. We're uh, not giving update. any dates by any means, but, but we do have. We have a meeting. Are, there's a meeting. <laughs> That's the, all. We the know, truth is now that we've messed things up so much, they don't even want to tell us anything. So it could be, you know, they could email us later today. We don't even know. 
<laughs> but speaking of your studio well, over there, Tom, you sent us some B-roll clips, and of course we want to have a studio tour. Um, what do you think? Should we should we show the clips, or do you want to take us on a live tour? No, 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 no live tour. But but I can I can talk over the clips. But let me just let me just say this is a working studio. This is not a studio that I cleaned up especially today <laughs> or that you know everything's wonderful and labeled and tagged and and this is the way the real world is mm -hmm. this is this is a real world studio for a hustler where something's always in process absolutely and there's always a, something being taken apart or put back together or or something connected into something else and so there are cables everywhere there are piece parts everywhere i think in the b-roll there's a prototype uh, PC we're working on that's sitting out on the desk just waiting for a part to come in to uh, to make it sing um, There's just all sorts of stuff going on. Oh, yeah, there we go. That's the that's the streaming idiots view of the uh, of, of the studio and so that's what I'm looking at now That's what I see when I do the streaming idiot show every week Tom, it's uh, not that messy. Right I don't there. know what you're talking about. Yeah, it was pretty bad. You see that you camera serious? right there? Yeah, that was one Your of my very first well, cameras. Then. Oh, yeah, look at that. Look at that. Now, I did clean that desk because that desk was a wreck. Um, but that's, that's generally the way the studio looks. It's not fancy. I mean, you know, anybody can, all you need is a green screen. Now, I, I do the green mm -hmm. screen over the desk because sometimes it's kind of fun to use the camera that shoots down from the top and mm -hmm. then key out the green and put in a fish tank or something like that. Oh, that's cool. Kind of, that's kind of awesome. You can see the new joystick from, from X Keys there. The uh, infamous we chat. To control the, the PTZ cam. Yep. Yep, yep. That's what it looks like. Those are my show notes from Wednesday's show. Pretty brief show notes. Yep. You got yourself and some you sweets. see some PTZ cams in the background and a, a, uh, a huddle cam. Um, shuttle, uh, no, what do you call that thing? Joystick. Mm -hmm. That's my Behringer, the <laughs> UMC 404 HD that allows me to bring in multiple channels um, in vMix, each channel individually. I really like that part about it. And I, I think we just saw, yeah, there, now, now we got the show from the, the camera side. This is what the camera sees right there. It just sees a green screen, nothing fancy. And actually behind the green screen is a giant, mo see those black blankets on the wall? They absorb sound. So they keep the sound from bouncing all around and creating that kind of empty room echo that you mm -hmm. get with a condenser mic, which is what I'm using today. That's my cable management. How about that? <laughs> that ought to make everybody feel better. And there's soundproofing. That's, that's the closet right there, the server closet. There's my to-do list and my customer list. And then wow. just, you know, a little bit of, that's just an old rug. Throw it up on the wall just to, to absorb sound. Those are some old t-shirts that I have that I don't fit into anymore. So I wrapped them around big chunks of fiberglass and hung them on the wall to absorb, absorb some of the sound. And more moving blankets there, just trying to deaden the studio. I'm not trying to soundproof it. I just want to deaden it. I don't want the noise, the sound bouncing all over the place. And then you can see stuff in transition going in and out. Yeah, there's the, the prototype we're working on and our vMix reseller of the Behind year. Behind the really, scenes really exclusive Eastern Shore Broadcasting. Yeah. Yep. That's it. That's it. Nothing fancy. Oh, yeah. Here's the server closet. This is the <gasps> part I really like the best. Wow. And so... Uh, that wh why is there no top on this machine? Because I'm swapping cards in and out, yep. testing new things. Always putting something different in there. Uh, I had to cannibalize this second guy. And then the, the bottom guy, he's, that's my streaming and, and recording PC. And then, of course, my fabulous cable management right there. We can only assume the yep. PC is one of yours. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Of yeah, course. Built and rebuilt and, and cannibalized and butchered. And, and, uh, we already yeah, have questions for you. Switch to run it all. Good. Oh, so we're getting questions. The questions let's, are let's, rolling let's, let's, let's in for Tom. Questions for Tom. Are you going to move the studio and to a new I'd... space? So, <laughs> wait. Whoa. Whoa. That was interesting. <laughs> yeah, we're going to, we're, we're actually have rented a, a bricks and mortar place. Uh, and so we'll be moving in the uh, first of March, I think. How Congratulations. Exciting. 
So all this will disappear. Well, you know, inspired by Stream Geeks, no doubt. I just, uh, I was like, wow, this is so cool. I got to do this. But, well, uh, thank you. you know, I don't have a $10,000 budget to do it. So <laughs> maybe I'll make a video on how to open a studio on, on a nickel. Because <laughs> that's about it. That's about all we'll, we'll have to spend. But that's the real world. I mean, not everybody has got a big corporate sponsor behind them that can make these things happen. If you're, Let me if tell you a uh, just a brief gig. story about, uh, I, I, this is one that I think is right up your alley, Tom. This Tuesday, a gentleman named Ryan uh, Brenneman from New Grace Media stopped New Grace by Media. our Tom office. Will know. I, th he, I think he knows you because he's getting a uh, custom computer from you, Tom, or at least thinking about it. Okay. Uh, his church... Uh, I don't know the name of the church. I can't remember off the top of my head. Ha is actually creating a studio in a downtown location. They're going to build a studio for the church. And with the outreach program to help local businesses um, create video content, maybe it's, a, maybe it's a nonprofit, maybe it's video content for the church itself, but the studio space is going to be owned and operated by the church and allow the church to uh, maybe charge for some of its services of the studio so that uh, it becomes a self-sustaining uh, portion of the church. And I thought that was just That's really interesting. Amazing. Isn't that interesting? Oh, yeah. What a great outreach tool and mm -hmm. supplying a, a probably a much needed service to the community. That's, that's cool. I love that. I love that. I can't wait to talk to him. Yeah, I know he's, he's, he's definitely, he came over to our studio because he wanted to see somebody in the, you know, maybe we're not necessarily the $10,000 budget's uh, not as realistic for everyone, but I think he had a, a very large budget. So he was hoping to see, you know, what were we doing? What, what, how, where are the cameras? Where are the lights? Where are the cables? Where's the switch? He had some, like we're using, we're still using like iPhone uh, headsets and he was suggesting wireless uh, in-ear microphone headsets. Mm -hmm. um, and the thing that I think you mentioned, and I've heard this over and over, is that these studios are basically like living animals and they're always, new things are coming back. Maybe you're tearing something yes. out. Maybe you're putting something in and they're just always evolving. Always evolving. Yep. Yep. In fact, the, the label maker thing, can't keep up. The latest thing we put in Seriously. is uh, Michael is now, we're trying to bring Michael into the show. Um, and so Mike is now has his own camera input and microphone. In fact, very similar to what you have over there, Tom. With, it might be uh, the same, Mike. Hey, Tom. How you doing? There he is. All right. He's got the little uh, yeah, that short. Yeah, looks like the Audio-Technica oh, Audio AT897. That's exactly oh what it is. Oh, my goodness. He knows yeah. like the right. part numbers and everything. Yeah. That's the only one I know. Tom, do you use an outline for your show? Uh, yeah, in the chat I'll show it to you. Hold on. <laughs> Whoa. Wow, that is very innovative. Yeah, here's, oh, man, here's another one. Oh, we're not to use that word. <laughs> Would you look at the NDI wow. cam? Uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> Secret notes. Careful Secret notes. Show that we to. are seeing straight from the evil genius, or just the genius, should I say? <laughs> There's not too much evil going on there. Oh my goodness! It's literally labeled show notes. Show notes. Yep. Fill up a notebook. That way, I can always go back and reference what I've got. Yep. Keep notes. I mean, I'm a paper guy. I grew up on paper. It's hard to leave. It's hard to leave paper. There's yeah. just something Better than a extra box. creative about paper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. That's Do you right. run Do I VMix, run VMix on, on the server? Oh, you can see it. Good. Yeah. Yes, I do. And it's not a fancy server. I mean, VMix is VMix can really hit some some pretty neat sweet spots. My server, the my production PC, is based on a second generation i7. That's the uh, i7 2600K. Now it is overclocked and water cooled, so it's it's really screaming and it gets really really hot. Um, and then a um, I think right now we've got a 1050 or maybe a 750 Ti. Um, so it doesn't take the highest and latest and greatest NVIDIA card, although the 750 is kind of the minimum that you can use. And then, you know, camera-wise, my, my studio camera of choice, believe it or not, is the PTZ Optics 12X SDI. 
Mm. Um, sitting right in front of me right now. And actually, what you and guys now, are seeing. And now it's time to announce is... this week's live technology giveaway winner. Hold on. As noted in the Hold contestant on. rules, all winners must be present in. Ah! Uh, thank Where did you, that Tom. come from? Tom, Tom, Tom kept that in the bag oh, of tricks just in God. case it was needed, and, and that actually saved us. So uh, I think Tom must have known that we were going to have some jokes for him up our sleeve. Yeah. So he came back with some return wow, fire. Tess, what did you think about that? <laughs> well, but, I looked all over for the alfalfa shot, and I could not find it. Because <laughs> so, it doesn't exist. <laughs> so Paul, Paul got spared. Uh, uh. <laughs> That's too funny. That was from uh, my Halloween series. Uh -huh. What you, you want to oh, talk about? Oh, actually, that was your from show? your appearance on this show. It was. That was from your it appearance was. on Streaming Idiots. Yeah, yeah that yeah. was my lip yeah. stain yeah. overview. You notice right down there in the bottom left hand. Oh corner, yeah, there's that my was the live uh, shot. Your yeah. reaction. My, my reaction shot. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That is so Actually, I was going to use that for the uh, the violence shot when you were talking about no violence, but I couldn't yes, get to it. Yes, darn time. it, darn so, it. You know, does this go. mean that we always mess up at some point and Tom yeah. just knew he had to have something prepared for that he, moment? You know, Tom, you, you, you basically had that on a key because you were ready for he that was one. so ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too funny. That's too funny. So what, so what are we doing? We got more questions? We've got some questions. I have a little agenda of, uh, of topics I wanted to run through. I, I wanted to briefly talk about um, Tess's first ever live stream uh, because I think we've been We're guilty We're going to go ahead and bring that up. I wanted to bring just briefly uh, because... Since we got started, why just, not just... Just because uh, um, you know, I feel like from what I've understood is that like I, we've been kind of running with these advanced things and quickly I'll plug stream geeks on Monday. We're going to be live streaming with a camera completely mobile. So we're getting really, we're going to be getting now. in a car, <laughs> driving through Dunkin Donuts and then pumping that all back into VMix, coming back into the studio and then, uh, you know, switch, putting our microphones on switching to a VMix show all in the same show. Mm -hmm. So that's really advanced. How many people honestly need to do that? <laughs> I don't know. But we're always trying to push the boundaries. But I but what I'd like to go back to is the like the first the feeling of the first show or the most basic of shows and, and, and really I think we need to do more of going back to this the, the beginnings. So Tess, what was it like on your very first show ever you actually asked Tom to be on your show as for support. Yes, because I he, knew he would be he reliable ended up and helpful. You at one point. Yes, well, to give him the benefit of the doubt, he got me out of the the kerfluffle I was in, and I forget who just recently I think was streaming idiots or World of Life streaming posted about their live show. It just ended up in in chaos, and that's exactly what happened with mine. I was getting the classic hearing myself in my headphones. So Tom got me through it. And then to uh, break the ice of the complete shock, stress, fear, almost crying I was going through, he played a little prank on me and pretended uh, that he was muted <laughs> so that I wasn't able to hear him after we had just fixed the problem. Just like that. Very similar to what he's doing. And, and he, he got me good. He did it to, you, to us again today, and he almost got me again. Oh, my gosh. Oh, he got, he got Mike. Mike, you, you scared Mike this time. Oh, you scared. I thought I broke VMix. <laughs> oh, Mike thought he broke VMix. So, Tom, you must have been just kind of enjoying yourself being such a veteran, knowing, you know, probably understanding a lot of the problems that Tess was going through, although she was freaking out. And I think a lot of people can probably relate to that pressure. I of think they can. Being on camera, operating VMix. Mm -hmm. yourself with mm -hmm. no one helping you and bringing on a live guest. And Tom, was VMix call even out then at that point? Or was she I using was. Zoom and all the other stuff? I don't remember. I, I mean, it was last year. It was last uh, January or mm -hmm. February. You were in uh, Florida. So it's been about uh -huh. a year. I v think VMix it was call out. Had... I'm not 100% though. VMix call oh, thank was, you, was... Thomas was coming out. Yeah. Seems like just yeah. yesterday. And it was it was really funny because Tess has got the impression that she was just, you know, just stressing and, oh and my gosh, coming yeah. apart at the steams. 
But from the outside, what I saw was this very poised young woman that was very self-assured and very confident and was and had some problems, but was going to very methodically kill those problems and get the result that she wanted. And well, so you, you were able to pull it off because you, your personality and your, yeah, what, 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 what's the right word? Your savoir faire Ooh, was able to I just sing it. Thank you, Tom. Yep. Well, that's kind of been our motto yep. here is like, don't cut the stream. Don't just run away crying. Yeah. Because the audience really has shown us that it's okay a lot of the times. And they're always there to be like, it happens to the best of us. And as a streamer, it kind of feels nice um, to know that everybody has the same issues. And I feel like everybody feels the same way during their first streams because it's not that easy. But I'm glad that I was able to uh, cover it up, Tom. <laughs> From, from the sounds of it, but I remember the feeling. So I guess it's coming out in my mind as if I was so stressed out because I was on the inside. But uh, yeah, it ended up being fun and funny thinking back. It's funny because I remember um, just a few months later, we interviewed uh, Andrew Cross from from New Tech. That was Paul's worst show. Basically, we hit the end. Everything was fine. Everything was working. New Tech wasn't very happy about using vMix Call. In fact, we had to scratch that for some reason and use Skype. Yeah. But, so I had to use last minute use Skype and do all these virtual audio cables. You can imagine why. I don't like that doing happy. that, obviously. And um, then we hit the intro button and the intro plays do 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 do. And the whole screen goes blue, and Windows says, not sure what's happening. Unhappy face. Unhappy face. We'll restart. And the I've never seen Paul restarts. scream so loud. Oh, we were so upset. And then, luck, but Tess was there, and Tess kept her cool. And I said, oh, sh like, F word, F word. I'm, like, leaving. And Tess goes, <laughs> Paul, just keep your cool. We're going to get through this. Let's just call them You're back. You're making me feel so happy. And I think it took about 20 minutes or more. And he was still willing to and have a meeting with us. he was still willing to go through all of this. We <laughs> and still ended us. up using VMix Call somehow for like the return audio. It was the most Kaluji setup ever, but we got through it. Anyway, so it was great having Tess there for support. So, and sometimes you don't always, don't always have someone to help you with, with that kind of yes, stuff. Yes, still but traumatized. Tom, I'd love to ask you about your plan for the brick and mortar. I, I think... I'll tell you from our experience, getting into like a real city as a brick and mortar streaming shop, I feel very differentiated from the other video production companies maybe in the area um, or let's say marketing companies in the area. Mm -hmm. Even though we're, you know, live streaming is kind of in the marketing world, it's in the social media world, it's in the video production world, it's in the audiovisual integration world, the broadcast world, it's parts of all of these worlds. But uh, when we go and tell someone that we're with Stream Geeks, they immediately think, oh, Facebook Live or YouTube Live. So it's just been this interesting place where p p real businesses, like we walked down and, and helped a retail store, mm -hmm. and we're, we're thinking about working with a bakery, uh, maybe the local fire department, mm -hmm. um, and we're d doing these like pro bono uh, case study streams, maybe for a car dealership. Uh, and it just feels interesting being part of this larger ecosystem of a real brick and mortar retail shop with all these other shops that it's are been very beneficial for it's us. been very beneficial we've been meeting so many different people who are interested in streaming um, tom i think it's going to be good for you and too. i'm interested what what are your thoughts on on being part of a it's set you know like this step for you well i'll tell you the the live stream that you guys did with karen's shop was it what um not this past monday but the oh, monday crystal. before crystal yeah before. crystal's shop yes that was a game changer that was amazing. Thank I mean, that you. just blew my mind. Um, n number one, the production was really outstanding. I mean, from a technical standpoint, I think you guys did a, a, a really spectacular job. But the concept of working with a local business and helping, helping them promote themselves mm -hmm. was just, 
I, it just blew me away. It just, if everything came together in my mind for that. The whole, the whole QV, QVC style that you were running, that the graphics that Tess put together to be able to show off the products and the, and the model numbers and the prices and, and the phone number across the bottom of the screen. And I, I've wanted to call Crystal and see, and see from her what her response has been since the, last Monday. Right. It's been almost two, two weeks, and I, I really want to know, has she had a lot of folks come in? I mean, does she keep track of her daily number of visitors, how many times the, the door opens? She'd have to take a look uh, at that she, for sure. She, yeah, does she track her calls? She's, she's got to get a website if she's going to do that kind of stuff, or at least put her products on her Facebook page. Um, I just think that is that opens up a whole world for local retailers that they didn't have. Even though the the stream is going to go to the ends of the earth, you're really you're really focusing locally. You know, right. she she had a thousand followers of her store, so all those folks got notified. I, I, I would assume when she was going to go live with this show, mm -hmm. and so there's you know a thousand people that have the potential to see it either live or after the fact. I just. I, I just, I was just thrilled at, and I've already talked, <laughs> I've already talked to somebody who will be unnamed because I haven't hired them yet to come in and be my, my Tess and be oh. my social media marketing manager and broadcaster. Wow. Because I think this is your big concept news. is a, is a, is a really, really good concept. And I went through in my little town of Fairhope, Alabama, mm -hmm. and there is the Downtown, uh, Downtown Businessmen's Association. And there are 92 members in my little town of the Downtown yeah. Businessmen's Association. Maybe it's not called Businessmen's anymore. That's not PC. Maybe it's just Business Association. But anyway, there are 92 members. Now, not all of them are going to benefit from a live stream. But what if 20% of them are? Mm -hmm. That's 18 stores. Right. Yeah. Now, you know, and I mapped out, you know, could they live stream weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, quarterly, what it would take for us to make a business out of that. That is, mm -hmm. we got to charge them money. But mm -hmm. just like you guys have seeded the farm with your, with your pro bono case, and you've talked about doing some other pro bono, that's going to seed it. It's going to seed it for you, but it's also going to seed it for me. Mm -hmm. Because I can point to what you guys did and say, that's what it's going to look like. Right. And you have the equipment, I, I the experience, all of it. Every live streamer out there ought to be driving through his downtown area and picking out all the places that are, that are like crystals. I mean, right. start there, you know, mm -hmm. that are that type of boutique and... And With talk the potential. to them and show them yeah. the video and say, wouldn't this be cool? And then do it for free just mm -hmm. to get something in your portfolio. Yep. And I love it. to be able to get the word out there. And and so we've got, you know, how many, how many hundreds of thousands of small towns are there across the United States? Oh my gosh, yeah. Right. Hundreds of thousands of small towns. That's hundreds of thousands of opportunities for local live streamers to engage with their community. Now, the temptation with live streaming is that you can go to the ends of the earth. And so you go to the ends of the earth. But here, we can take it and turn it all the way back around and make it specific, locally specific. Now, my particular little town, Fairhope, I don't know about Westchester, but my particular town, Fairhope, has a, a a number of things that happen here throughout the year, kind of events. Oh, that's cute. Thank you. And oh, that was perfect. During those, <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. And and one of those events is called the uh, the the Arts and Crafts Festival. And we have two hundred and fifty thousand people that come into our little town of fifteen thousand for a weekend in the spring for this giant wow. art show. And so all these people come in and they 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 taste our little town and they like mm -hmm. it and they'd like to keep up with what's going on in it. And but they go back to they go back to Illinois or they go back to Detroit or they go back to Atlanta and mm -hmm. how are they going to kind of keep up with what's going on in this cute little town that they they've liked? Well, now is the opportunity not just to take a a one or two time or three time boutique show but now to build it out into a small town TV network that, that pulls in the feed from the local high school football game and pulls in the 4th of July celebration. And down here in the South, 
we have this big thing called Mardi Gras, which is going on yes. right now. And our little town, our little town has three Mardi Gras parades. What? The town is wow. so small and the parade is so long that the parade has to wind around the town. And so if you sit in one place, you'll see the parade three or four times. Right. It's amazing. Wow. And those kinds of things are kind of cultural that? events that can be beautifully live streamed to all these people that would like to have been there. Yep. And so this little TV channel, this little local internet TV channel now becomes a go-to place. And with that go-to place, more boutiques get involved. And it's, so it, it, just, it just magnifies itself. Right. And some of, the, some of the events are gonna be free. That is, it's not gonna cost anybody to put it out there. Other events you're gonna get paid to do. Other events you may have to pay to do. But I, I think there's a tremendous idea in there somewhere with all of that. And you guys just blew my mind last Monday when you well, went and did that, that thing with Crystal. Just, we're happy you know, to inspire hats off you. To you guys. Great Very job. Yeah, so are you going to add that the, to your services? Sorry. A, a couple of the things that, that I will respond to that worked for us was one is joining the local chamber of commerce. Mm -hmm. um, Similar who, to... They Tom want us to out. succeed. Yeah, it's similar yep. to what Tom, the business uh, association there. And what I realized in joining that group and having them come help us with our ribbon cutting and, and meeting with us is that they want us to succeed as a live streaming business. So they're going and they know that live streaming is going to help the small businesses in the community. So they're going out on our behalf mm -hmm. and saying, did you know that this company is offering live streaming services and we both want everyone to succeed here? So they're actually going out on our behalf. But what I'll say is that creating that one free pro bono live stream for our local boutique here, Crystal, is now I've shown that to maybe four or five other businesses. Right. And they get it because they know that store. They've been in that store. They know Crystal because this is a small town like yours uh, you know maybe there's a hundred or two hundred businesses in there and everyone knows each other once you start showing the value to one it will it's good it, I mean we've had five or ten other businesses after that yep. say could you do reach that for out me now <clears throat> and now unfortunately we do not do live streaming as a service so we actually not can't technically. service all of these companies that are coming to us at this point the, we're only really interested in selling what cameras we call camera ready applications so for example there's a local Tesla car dealership that is extremely camera ready that I'm very excited of doing that show. And there's a very camera ready, beautiful little French bakery <laughs> that we're going to Sometimes do. Sometimes we're overly honest uh, over the, here. The streaming services is not necessarily our business model, but I can't believe how doing one free pro bono show n d done well, dude, we did it as good as we could possibly do. Um, how much that got shared in our local community and how now we have to talk to crystal about how many customers she was able to um create mm -hmm. the thing with doing a single live stream that i think every business is going to find out is that you have to be consistent that you can do one stream and you've got a thousand likes and a thousand people are going to see it and only five percent are really going to watch the whole thing um but that came and went and maybe one or two people came to your store, maybe 10 did, maybe someone bought online. But the only reliable strategy, I think, unless it's a, a big event that's gonna get blasted out for small businesses is to do either weekly, bi-weekly or monthly, but some type of regular schedule mm -hmm. so that your viewers know to tune in and you can make it a regular part of their, of their uh, lifestyle. Here, here's an exception to that. If you were to create, and I understand that you guys, that you say you're not a live streaming company, but if you were to create Westchester Today, the Today Show for Westchester, mm -hmm. and every Tuesday morning you invited in a local celebrity or, or a, a, a longtime citizen for an interview, you're going to develop an audience. And if Westchester today, now today we're on site at the Tesla dealership. Next week we're gonna be on site at blank, blank, blank. And so you're building an audience for the Today Show and that audience then spins off to people that are interested in Tesla, people that are interested in, in Crystal's boutique. And it, it, it magnifies itself. I, I see just, what you're I'm, saying. Yeah. I'm convinced you're already, of it. I cannot you're wait to try out it. Meeting I with can't all wait the to businesses try it. anyway. I really think that it's great, and I really do hope that 
that you are, you are adding that as a service to Eastern Shore Broadcasting, Tom, with with the help of some new employees. Well, I I have this this young woman mm-hmm. who is about ready to graduate from college, mm-hmm. and say so I'm using the test model, um, and I'm going to snap her up. I'm, I'm going to snap her up before anybody else can find her mm-hmm. and, and, and make her think she's really lucky to be working with me. And then <laughs> it's I'm, a fun I'm industry. I'm going to set her loose. I'm going to, I'm going to show her every video that, that Tess Protesto has ever been in because that's going to be how we're going to model it. <laughs> and I'm going, to, I'm, I'm going to turn her loose downtown. And I'm going to say, okay, don't worry about the technical aspect of it. You go make relationships with all those folks downtown mm-hmm. and and let's give it away. It's like, it's like you know, uh, famous Amos cookies. You know the story of famous That's the way Amos. marketers get started. Tell the story, Tom, because exactly what you should he, be, people should be Oh, doing. yeah. He started famous Amos cookies when sugar was at an all-time high when flour was at an all-time high. It was the wrong time to start a cookie company. But he had an idea. He knew it was going to work. He went out on the street and gave away his cookies. And, you know, the rest is history. Hard work and history, but history. Yes, he gave it away so that people could literally taste. We have to do the same thing. We have to yeah. help people understand how this technology is going to work for them. Right. It's not just enough to bring the technology to it. We have to interpret it for them and say, okay, mm-hmm. when we say X, Y, Z technically, really we mean you're going to sell a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. And this is how. And it's a great and process really, to go through that translation. We're, process, we're not internet know. streaming companies, Paul. We're marketing companies. Mm-hmm. We just use internet streaming tools. Very you true. know that. Mm-hmm. Yes. You well, are the one that created the whole life, the concept. Even if I'm Tom's, just copying everything you guys do. Even if Tom's um, clients want to do an event streaming and they eventually catch on and they love it, they want to stream for themselves, Tom can even sell them the equipment. It's, I mean, Absolutely. it is, it's, it's, it's a very interesting and good Absolutely. business strategy. And I do enjoy trying to explain, like we were, there's a French lady down the street. She's from France. She has the most beautiful French bakery, the most authentic everything, mm-hmm. all the equipment for baking. It's is dangerously all close. France, dangerously. It's like a block away. And so we go over to her and we say, look, we're not going to every business in this area, just a few. And you have one of the most beautiful little French restaurants that's totally authentic, French bakeries, and we'd like to help you. And um, it was just so funny for her to understand, like, um, you know, that she's going to be on camera, that she's live broadcasting to the world, yet she has over 5,000 likes on Facebook, and people love her business. They just maybe have only been there once and forgot about it or... I mean, it's actually, it's, it's a great business. It's doing well. Yep. Uh, I'm trying to think of what was so exciting about meeting with her, but just seeing her story, sl- her Paul. slowly. Oh, so that's the point. She has so an amazing with, story. With some businesses, like with Crystal in the boutique, yeah. where she has jewelry, the QVC style selling will work. But for other businesses, like this lady who has such an incredible story of mm-hmm. coming the narrative. from France and making the croissants as if they're a crescent of the moon and having the salt sprinkled and having the time tick on the clock. Like, it was very important for her to have, like, the water from the ocean. She's and passionate. the salt from the sea and the crescent of the moon and the, the, the yeast rising with the heat. And, the, and, like, she had this whole poetic story she moved, Paul. that we have to tell in this live stream. If we don't do it right, she's going to be upset. But um, she, her passion now is more of a storytelling. Like she doesn't want to sit there and do QVC style selling of a baguette or a croissant where we say it's $3 and it's hot now. Come on down. It's a lot different. Now we're, and that's what this is such a fun process for us because now we're going out and doing a whole nother one where now the emphasis is on the storytelling, the, right. the small business owner. Who is she? And honestly, I feel like we might have served Crystal better by doing more of that style, my earpiece is falling out, uh, of because I think that when we talk about being a marketing company and thinking about the buyer's journey and we're attracting all of these new people with um, 
with uh, so social media streaming and, and outreach, I think we have to think about telling the story first before we get into the QVC <laughs> styling. I know it helped Crystal, but um, with this lady that we're going to be working with soon, her name's Catherine, uh, I'm really Catherine. interested to see if we can just introduce businesses and tell their story and visually show people a person that they might actually come to admire and respect. And that makes the whole business experience, especially in small business, kind of, uh, it's kind of important, I think. Well, it sounds like she needs to be your first guest on Westchester Today Show. She would be a perfect applicant for that. Yeah, she really would. And then you cut away to, to B-roll of her, her bakery. Yep. That's there the plan. Go. Yeah, that's the plan. So, and, and I think throughout this process of going to the fire company is definitely on the list mm -hmm. uh, to help them do a donation based thing and a car dealership just because there's so many and you know how these car dealerships with their commercials, I'm sure they're ready to go. And just seeing the different businesses and how they react and how they use this technology that's so open ended is going to be a, a definitely a growing experience for us to see because if the technology is so open ended, I feel like figuring out the angles for small businesses and the whole, you know, one small business talking to the other. It's just, it's just really exciting. Special. So we've got a giveaway we have to do. Yes, um, we do have the Why don't we do that real quick? Giveaway. And then we'll, that'll give people to ask time to ask questions. We've been ignoring the chat the whole time. And let's answer the questions that we've been ignoring. Okay. Um, and I'll bring the, the giveaway wheel over here. All right. So are we going to roll the credits or are we going to just bring it over? Sure. Why don't we roll the credits? Okay. And then we'll uh, get ready for the giveaway. This has been World Studio Tour Live with Tom Sinclair of Streaming Idiots and owner of Eastern Shore Broadcasting. I called you in the title Custom PC Artesian Extraordinaire. <laughs> <laughs> if you ever wonder what computer we use to Thank run you. our live streams, it is an Eastern Shore Broadcasting yes. PC, so we can highly recommend that PC for well, you. Well, you guys have started a trend, you know. Really? Because because now uh, the the Magewell distributor here in the U.S. has now got one of our PCs. Yes, mm -hmm. thanks to yeah. uh, thanks to Steve, and. Uh, Yep, it's and and of course we supplied them to VMix last year for their NAB show, and oh, yeah. we'll be building yeah. another one for VMix again this year. So it's almost like yeah, we have regular customers, and then we have super customers like Paul and Tess. <laughs> yes, we're a yeah. good team. <laughs> yeah, Tom Sinclair and Haverford Systems over here. So I'm happy to meet you in person finally in Las Vegas shortly. And thank you for joining us today. In 60 days. Yeah. Actually, 59 Countdown. days. Did you buy your Sorry. tickets yet? Your, your plane tickets? Oh, months ago. Yeah. We need to hurry up. Yeah, we do. All right, let's roll the credits and do the giveaway. Oh, yeah. Tom, we hope you'll stick around. I'm here. Hey, and we're back. Our first winner is Siat Ilhaner from Los Angeles, California. Looks like, yes, yeah, Say Ilhaner, Ilhaner mm -hmm. from Los Angeles. S A I T as the first name. That's a tough one. Every once in a while we get a, a tough one, and I'm not sure, and I hate to butcher names, but what can you do? So while we're waiting for that, we're going to give them 60 seconds to claim YouTube the prize. YouTube is extremely far behind. Is it? Have you noticed that with your live shows? Live show, Tom? Mr. Sinclair. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Are you talking to me? Yeah. 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 YouTube um, has been extra you know, far behind days, for me lately. Yeah. Huh. Generally, it, it'll run anywhere from five to 10 seconds uh, latency. But, you know, if somebody's got an intermittent connection, 
and they're getting some buffering on their end, you know, YouTube will pause. And then when they rejoin again, uh, there'll be that much time that has passed. And so it'll be buffered, but they'll get it, but it, they'll be, you know, could be two minutes behind. For example, uh, on my computer right now, I'm plugged into the network, and the, the show hasn't even ended yet on YouTube. Well, if you right-click the cog, remember there's something called Stats for Nerds, and it's telling us that there is, oh my gosh, 72 seconds behind. So that is, what is a going full on with that? minute. Um, that is more than I have, I have ever seen. Is that my computer? It my also pe tells us, though, that the... L they call it buffer health. <laughs> the drop we've only dropped 199 frames throughout this entire almost hour long mm -hmm. broadcast which is pretty incredible all right so i'm going to paste his name see this is why we have to wait extra long yeah, or paste it because that is real time yes so i'm pasting it as well in the chat thank you for those of you who, who are saying that you're here we like you to say in the chat that you're here because that saves us some time so let's let's talk about nab for a little bit while we're waiting um, yeah tom are you going to be with vMix again this year? I am. Apparently, those guys didn't get enough of me last year. <laughs> and they said, oh, you know what? We'll have that old guy around here one more time. You're their so influencer. They, uh, they, they sent me a new pair of shoes. Ooh. And, and they have this whole outfit that they want me to wear. They have special really? vMix underwear. No and, way. And special vMix pants and a vMix shirt. So I'll be 100% vMix. Wow. Um, but yeah, no, it, 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 is so much, it is so much fun to go to NAB and to work in a booth. I mean, I, I just got, I, by the end of the day, every day last year, I was more charged up than I was at the, at the, at the beginning really? of the day. Because you meet, you meet so many cool people that mm -hmm. are doing so many neat things. And they have questions. And, you know, how can I make this work with this to do this? And with vMix, vMix is just a, a giant Lego set. And so once you learn how the Legos work, then you can put them together in different ways and make them do different things. I had, oh, what was it? I had this one group of six people come up to me and they do um, a paranormal live stream show. Really? Oh, and I've heard this so they're before. talking about, the, did you hear that? Somebody, and, they were nominated so for the streaming so they're telling me awards. all about their show. And that's right. That's right. I remember that cool stuff and and so you did but you just meet all sorts of neat people that are doing really really neat things mm -hmm. and of course last year at nab you know the lanyards vmix sponsored the lanyards yes. so there was a yeah. vmix logo on the lanyard Smart. and we had lots of folks coming by to say you know what was you know what were we all about so we got to tell the story from the very beginning mm -hmm. but it was just it was just a ton of fun NAB is a wonderful opportunity to expand your horizons. I mean, if you've never been, it's hard to explain the experience. Yeah, just, I can't it, wait. It's, it's can't so wait. amazing, it's so really big, hard. so many great things to, to look at and see. And it, We're gonna it's have helpful too much fun. to have a it's helpful to have a partner if you're going as a as a participant it's helpful to have a partner to go together for a while and then to split up and then come back with each other and show each other oh okay i found these really cool things we need to go yes. look at and then i found these cool things we need, need to go look at you really need and, someone uh, like that yeah. and mike's going to be with us too by the yeah, way mike's going to be here be at the show too awesome mike will mike be signing autographs <laughs> i hope so will you sign autographs mike he needs to our I, yes, I'll, I will be signing away. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I've never maybe, signed maybe an autograph. Maybe you can sign my VMix underwear. <laughs> <laughs> I want a VMix t-shirt. Honestly, no, it, I, Martin no, should be no signing, no signing of the mouse underwear. Mouse. That would be hilarious. <laughs> he does, he just does, he's not that kind of guy, but if Martin literally could be signing VMix Rick mouse Myers. Mouse. Oh, Rick I'm, Myers. Okay. Rick Myers is our next one. Um, yeah, Matt Davis will be there for a little bit. He's meeting with Andrew Cross to talk about a few of the new uh, projects that they're working on. Um, so Matt Davis will be there for the first half, and he always wanders around for us and brings back a bunch of new things. Whoa, look um, at Facebook. No way. Facebook is so far Facebook behind. Facebook just had the outro running. What's going on with my computer? Is it my computer? It could be, you know, it could be your computer. It could be, I, I don't know. Uh, but my Facebook is, was just on that Paul close-up. Oh. Yeah. 
It's so be, your computer's on. Yeah, it could be. Something's wrong with me. Let's not worry about it. Oh, yeah, Rick my Myers! Oh, Rick Myers is here. Five seconds behind. All right, Rick Myers is here. Yeah, it's definitely my computer, guys. Sorry about that. Now on uh, here, by the way, is an NAB pass. So what this means is this is not just a, a, a coupon code. This is a PTZ Optics pass. Special. Where you can get in, you know, Saturday, Sunday before the event, early in the morning, late at night. So this is a special. We added that on there. Yes. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and spin. Okay. I don't know if my social hasn't been working either. All right. One, two, three. For you, Rick Myers. <laughs> Good shot. Good shot. I love the color on that shot. Oh, so cool. Oh, oh, IP joystick. IP joystick. That's a good one. Wow. Congratulations. If you're not, not going to get a camera, an IP joystick's a good one. Great. So just send test.protesto.ptzoptics your address, and we will send you an IP joystick. Let me look back and look at some questions for Tom, because we have completely... Well, Tom, I will say, Tessa can look for some questions. I wanted to mention that a lot of our conversation today, I wasn't planning on talking about all of the uh, small business items. So happy for you that you're getting a brick and mortar and growing your team. It, it, it's Hopefully, we can help you in that regard. We're planning on doing a show in two weeks on what it's like to be a freelancer in the live streaming market. Uh, and because there have been so many freelancers, and we've kind of determined that there's a ton of different types, but there, well, the two that I think are the most, uh, the, the two that we're going to be focusing on a lot is, one is there's the freelancer who's building a studio where they can have people come in, have studio time. Scott Whitney would be a perfect example of someone who has a co-op, a streaming co-op, but the technology's in place and the customers for can come to them. And then the other main freelancer is the uh, freelancer that goes to the customer and goes on-site and streams on-site. Of course, there's everything in between there too, but those seem to be the two extremes. You're either building a studio with uh, at where people can access all the equipment or you're bringing the equipment to the customer. And it sounds like you're going to maybe cool. do a little bit of both. We're going to experiment and, and see what, what fits, see what works. Yeah. yeah. Make I, sure, I really um, do want to do, I really first. do want to do the Westchester today show. I know. I well, that's, that's a great good. idea. I, mean, I don't think that would even be that hard. Add We're to not our list do it here for Westchester. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the the problem with a good idea is it births about five more good ideas. Yeah. yeah. And then that births another twenty five good ideas. And before you know it, you've got so many good ideas, you're running all over the place. The challenge now is to, and you guys have done a good job of this, is to maintain your focus on what your what your bread and butter is. And for mm -hmm. you guys, obviously, the bread and butter is PTZ Optics camera. I love your camera. I sell the tar out of your camera. <laughs> your camera is perfect. Makes us happy. It, it, it's perfect for churches. It's, mm -hmm. it, it's ideal for churches because you're not getting an intrusive cameraman with a tripod in the middle of everything. I am convinced, and I wasn't convinced before, but I am convinced now that your camera has a place in sports. And I'm, I am working with several folks right now on how to make it work for them. It's not going to be the primary end-all, be-all camera for sports mm -hmm. yet, anyway. But it's going to be a great supplement to that primary be-all camera. You and, mean with the uh, pan and I'm tilt so motions following the action? Well, let, let's, let's say if we're, no, probably not. It's just not going to work for that yet mm -hmm. until we get a controller that's going to have an immediate response, uh, like a cameraman can immediately p pan and tilt his camera, mm -hmm. uh, we're not going to be able to use it like that. But there are going to be a lot of other times when we can use it. For example, if we're going we're to show uh, st what, what essentially are going to be fixed shots of a coach on the sidelines, the referee making his call, the team in the huddle, um, you know, all those times where you've got a, a fairly fixed frame and you know where those those places are going to be. A lot of them you can set up as presets, 
Um, right. Others, you're going to be able to use your joystick controller or heck, you can set up your keyboard, the cursor keys on your keyboard to control the left, right, up, down functions in the space bar to make them stop. I mean, that is in vMix, of course. So there, there are going to be a lot of different ways and we're beginning to experiment with, with folks now on how to put a PTZ Optics camera into that sporting environment. Um, I've got a TV studio, a, a TV, a, a community TV station um, up in Connecticut that has, I think, six of your cameras. Wow. Uh, and they use them as their primary mm -hmm. broadcast cameras. What? Mm -hmm. And that, yeah, exactly. And they love the fact that they can put it on a tripod and they can move it around, but that they also don't have to have a cameraman standing behind it in order to adjust the shot, to, to, to crop it, to move it back, to, to pan this way or that way. Um, and so I think there's a whole, and I was just talking to a, a public TV station in New York yesterday. I did a demonstration for nine people and we talked about vMix and we talked about PTZ cameras. Um, so I, Y'all have done an amazing job of putting your conference camera out into the broadcast world. And I think it's going to just explode or continue to explode. Let's put Thank it you. And we're definitely taking note of, of the usage of that. And Matt, Matt Davis is building in things like 120 frames per second, for example, on the 720p channel, which is new via NDI. And we're trying to build in broadcast frame rates soon and things that the broadcast world has been asking for. We're definitely taking note um, so that we can fit better into that, that mold. Uh, interestingly, the soccer team, the, the Brooklyn Legion uh, soccer team, is using three PTZ Optics cameras for the entire, this is professional level soccer, and proposing that every soccer league in the country use that as for three PTZ Optics cameras. It feels a little bit robotic. It doesn't feel like a real cameraman. But in New York City and these big cities where these soccer teams are, they have to pay union workers to operate the cameras. And they're incredibly expensive, way more expensive than the cameras themselves. It's just paying for the cameramen in, in, in big uh, cities where they have to pay for the union. So um, the cost savings on the remote, con remotely controlled cameras uh, is, is actually driving a lot of places in the sporting world where they have to pay union camera operators uh, to put in these options. And I hope that it works really well for... Um, for the for the soccer leagues. All right, let me do a couple questions. Oh, go, please, you guys go are off on your uh, conversation well, here. You I would think we were Bruce, having some coffee Bruce together Ferguson or something. Ferguson was was commenting Tom and saying that yes, he does use two PTZ optics cameras as secondary right. sports cameras, not the main camera, but supporting cameras. I keep getting a question about Twitch. Are cameras and using on Twitch? Is that something that's that that people do? Have you ever uh, tried it? Well, they certainly could. Uh, we ha we did we did play with Twitch. You did. Uh, Twitch is essentially a content delivery network like YouTube or a lot Facebook, of gamers. but specifically for gamers. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, what gamers will do is they will have a really high quality capture of the game, mm -hmm. and then in the corner or in the side, they'll put themselves so you can see the person playing the game. Mm -hmm. And um, what I'll say about that is that. Uh, normally, a Logitech webcam is okay for something like that, but what's happening in the eSports industry, which is really fun and cool, is that they're creating s literally teams of e-gamers. Yeah. So it's literally eight or ten, or maybe I'm not exactly sure, 20 people who are all playing video games together on a team. In the same place. In the same area. Oh, so you would need a PTZ camera to so go around to each player. that's when potentially, you know, nice. our cameras could come into play because you might want to have a multi-camera production of the whole team. So if people want to buy a PTZ Optics camera from you, Tom, do they go to EasternShoreBroadcasting.com? They do. Okay. I'm going to put that in the so chat. EasternShoreBroadcasting.com. Oh, I'm so happy for you, Tom. I, I think that I really think that, well, right now, for us anyway, this space was less than $15 a square Who makes PTZ Optics foot. cameras? <laughs> we got a question, Sony or Panasonic? We make PTZ Optics yeah, cameras. <laughs> They're not a Sony or JVC or Panasonic cameras. We are so. just PTZ Optics. Um, the... I think that it, I hope that it's affordable for you, Tom, because we thought that it was incredibly affordable uh, here in Westchester, Pennsylvania, uh, which is a 
not actually a cheap area to live, but um, I don't know. It was fifteen dollars a square foot, which was less than you know two thousand. Uh, maybe because the floors are like this. You it, trip it was, on the mess. We found it. We we were able to find a gem that. We got was lucky. We're making it work. Incredibly affordable. I hope that you could find something that's a, that fits in your price range that you can keep because putting a sign outside that says Eastern Shore Broadcasting, I just think. You're going to have so many walk by passerby. That's it's, what we it's, keep it's getting. It's interesting. Now. It makes it real, I feel yeah. like. For and us, feel free did. to give your new employee my contact if, to bounce some thoughts off of or, or anything like that. Or how to right. deal it, with it these it, audio it visual that men. gap, Tom, I think that you were mentioning how for <laughs> some people we have to translate, you know, and it's still to this day an RTMP server mm -hmm. and a secret key. And what do I do with that? And a lot of people just stop right there. You know, what is an RTMP key? Why do I have to have a secret key? What is this? And it just confuses people right there, right at the beginning before they even get to streaming. Is the actual camera head a Sony JVC or Panasonic? Uh, the Panasonic, we do use a Panasonic CMOS sensor. And that's a very high quality CMOS sensor. The lens is actually from a company called Olympus. So what we've done essentially is to try to find the highest quality, you know, best performing parts that we could and put them into a, a good camera. But Tom, uh, what I think for, f if you could, and the other thing we're thinking about, last thing I'll mention because we're getting to the end here, is that we're thinking about maybe having some courses taught in our local area where Michael was maybe, I, I wouldn't do this with my two kids in the time I need to be at home, but uh, Michael was thinking maybe he would have People come to the office as a downtown location and spend a Wednesday night uh, getting a, a, a training session on how to stream. And I feel like there's just so many people that want to do it, but they, they're hands-on people. They need, we're all human. We need tr to be trained on how to do these things. A couple of people were asking, we're using a 20X SDI PTZ Optics camera, and Tom is using a 12X SDI, yes. I believe. Right, Tom? That's correct. They were asking what camera And actually, using. this camera is... Um, Am I allowed to say this? <laughs> I'm Is checking with my attorney over here. Um, it, it's an NDI camera. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh. I didn't know you were actually using that one, um, like, right now. I had no idea. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're so close. Sorry. Unfortunately, we, yeah. we flubbed up on the, the release date too no, many you've times. No, already, they know you have it, Tom, so it's not a big deal. Okay, okay. No, okay. I mean. This is, this is the. This is actually the NDI HX I image. This is not the SDI. You're actually or HDMI using image. the NDI wow, function. Wow, that looks actually good. Actually, using NDI through VMix right now. VMix is sending you a 1080p, uh, four megabit per second feed, and um, the camera is sending the 1080p to VMix. For those of you who might be getting oh, angry in the chat. Tom runs the risk of having like something. It's not. It's not guaranteed to be perfect. His copy because it is a beta version, right, Tom? Oh, let's talk about betas. Matthew Thomas sends me this beta. That's a beta spelled A L P H A. Yeah. Goodness gracious! Does that mean I was it's a that test go? monkey and didn't even know it. No. What does that mean? He sent me the pre-beta. I think, it, yeah, it was... What you was have, you have an alpha before a beta. We told but everyone it the, wasn't quite real, ready, didn't we? Yeah. yeah, but that was the video I made where I, sh right. where I showed this, the different steps of going through. And, and it took me, I don't know, it took me 45 minutes to, to upgrade the firmware and load the key. But then when I went back to it the second time, because somehow something got screwy and it, and it lost its memory. And, and so I got new firmware and I updated the firmware and loaded the license key in like six minutes. It was amazing. Yeah, so he, the difference was, between the alpha and the video. beta that I got. I appreciate it, Tom, because he that watched your was video. Helpful. I remember I, was, I went to uh, Las Vegas with Matt during a uh, consumer electronics show, and he, we were watching it together, and Tom, uh, we were like, Matt was saying, wow, uh, you know, I realize I could skip this step. I, can, I realize I could skip this step after watching, you know, you do it step by step without missing a beat. Uh, he realized how to remove a few steps, make it easier. So mm -hmm. he's just really worried that, you know, he if, if, perfect, if 1% of, of the cameras has a problem, that's going to be hundreds of cameras. So right. he's just really, he can't being, have that. really being very cautious. Uh, but I think we have a meeting next Tuesday that, that this should, should put us forward. Will we be doing a show on the NDI setup? The real world setup? is, it's, yes. yes. 
the real world is it's not going to be perfect. He's not going to get 100.00%. I guess that's with any product, yeah. right? I, yes. It is. It is. I mean, you've and taken I understand, it to you such know, extent. 1% represents hundreds and hundreds. I, I get that. Mm-hmm. He's okay. taken it to such extents that the serial number that you put into the landing page to get the firmware automatically recognizes the, the type of camera that you have so that there's no possible way that you could load the wrong firmware. So we're taking it so far that, that when this does... And, and uh, the great thing is that you know, this is going to be the first step to so many new products mm-hmm. with NDI. Like everything we come out with now is going to have the option to upgrade to NDI, and um, like soon it's this just will that all be behind it's us. This, it's this 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 foundation, if you will, for the next two or three years, where everything's going to automatically be recognized in vMix, Wirecast, live stream. Tess is using the NDI Telestrator, which I absolutely love. It's and it blows people away. I've been using it on my show, and I'm annotating on live video and. There's just so much that's going to be coming down the pipeline. But I think you're right, Tom, and I'm glad we talked about small businesses and the little things because we've got all these toys, but we, we ha- I feel like I want to be one of the guys, and I think, Tom, you'll be one of the guys who goes, takes a step back and tries to make it real for businesses that are actually going to be able to use this technology. And, and it will be a multi-step process for them, but I think the, the key is it doesn't happen until somebody sells something. And then when they realize they can sell something with it, they understand the value. And the best way to prove its value is to give it away and let them taste it for free. And and you guys did that beautifully the other day with Crystal. And just yep. we're gonna follow up, and we that. just have to have her. Uh, I uh, we told her from the beginning, and this is if someone else is doing this, it's like we want you to succeed, we want you to sell stuff. The best thing ever it is if we come crazy, back in a couple weeks and you tell us that you got a customer. Okay, okay. Here's the idea. Here's yes. the idea. Don't tell anybody about this. <laughs> Although this is going out to millions of people all over the world. Um, Make Crystal your first Westchester Today guest and talk to her about the experience of coming into her shop and doing the live stream and what the results were. And it's going to be a great follow-up yeah. to, that, to that live show in her store, but it's also going to introduce your new Westchester Today show. Yeah. That would be crazy. The only thing we would need is time. If you don't do it, I will. I'm going to fly up there and interview Crystal myself. Well, Tom, you know, I remember hearing you say that. And, I, and it, Tom is like a, like got a crystal ball over there because I remember Tom saying, Tess needs to have her own show. She should do a makeup show. And here we are one week later and Tess did it. Well, it was two days ago. Uh-huh. She just started her own show. And it, was, it went, went down really well. I mean, there was no major technical... Malfunction. Oh, the VMix social. Was the VMix social wasn't VMix working, social, but, but otherwise, my good. audience, like my friends and mom and sister, they had no idea. So it was a lot of fun. <laughs> we'll see what happens. So Tom was right. You know, I, I, we weren't sure if you were ever going to have your. So now here you are. So give us a year, Tom. I think you are right about a lot of this stuff, and uh, maybe we'll make it happen. We'll see. I'm looking for it next week, guys. <laughs> You've got the technology. You've got a green screen. You can be anywhere in the world. True. That's true. Okay. N- enough pressure. Enough pressure. Well, this was so much fun. This is good stuff. Thanks we- for inviting me on. Thanks for joining us. We know that you're a busy man. Nah, not really. <laughs> <laughs> not really. All right, let's see. I think that about wraps it up questions? for us today. We missed all of the questions. We missed a few. But we, tried our we got the Twitch one, which was really important. Somebody asked us what makes a camera live streamable. That was which one is, that we didn't cover. Yeah, sometimes it's tough to answer all of those questions when they're so open. Well, Tom, well, how would you answer that question really quick? What makes a camera live stream if- capable? If a camera has an output connector on it of any variety, it's probably able to be part of a live stream. 
most cameras are not independently live streamable without mm -hmm. being able to send their video somewhere else. That's the short answer. Yeah, because I, th I well, pictured the, DSLRs. Well, that, I never see anybody well, the, live streaming one, with that. Is see, that not possible? The one possible? caveat that I would throw in there is that a lot of people think they can stream with the DSLR, and those cameras, when pl doing live video, uh, like I guess they either overheat or automatically shut down after okay. 20 minutes. So I if the camera is labeled a live streaming camera, the other caveat that I'd put in there, yes, it has video outputs, Maybe like the PTZ Optics cameras that can actually stream directly to YouTube or Facebook uh, built in, it might be talking about. But the thought is, is that it can be turned on and output video for long periods of time without shutting down. So if it's a photography camera that can shoot video, that doesn't mean it's really made for live video a lot of the time. Ah. And I think that's been, for some people, um, an issue because I know... I've heard it. I've heard it over and over again. People say, oh, you know, my DSLR overheated on me and it automatically shut down 20 minutes into my live stream. Yeah. And uh, Chris, we, we recommend Magewell capture cards to answer that question really quick. Yep, and Tom is a, a great source for that. Uh, for Arliss Miller in the YouTube chat says that he has or they have used a DSLR for live streaming. Oh, very interesting. Yeah, the newer DSLRs have seemed to have overcome that heating problem. Have they? Okay. Oh, and really? I think the, the, the folks that are manufacturing them really do Has have, to have, a have understood that this is a brand new market for them the same way uh, that you guys have understood that this is a new mm -hmm. market. So I think we'll see more and more DSLRs being live stream capable. I'll be live interested stream in to the see sense that. that you're plugging the HDMI out um, to a, an, a, an HDMI capture cards somewhere along the line. What I want to see is I want to see the, the regular video cameras and the DSLR guys too, that would be fine, do exactly what you guys have done, which is build in NDI. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's going to be, and that's when catch we know up one day, in some maybe. ways that we've really arrived. I know. Yeah, everyone they're behind is the, really they're behind waiting the for game. that. They're waiting for that. Oh, they're waiting for a real over-the-shoulder Sony camera. Uh, HDMI or SDI? SDI. It probably won't be Sony because Sony's got their own protocol. So no, I don't think they will. Panasonic You're right. Or JVC or Canon. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we'll it may be JVC. I don't know. I won't say anything. But I, th I heard that I, they're, they're usually pretty quick to move <laughs> on to a lot of these things. Like they have cameras, I think, that can stream to like a CDN. This is really hot. I think. Yeah, let's turn this off. These, these like NDI burning. telestrators, really. All right, Tom, we better wrap it up. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Tom. Well, it's been Can't the highlight to... of my week. Thank you, guys. Oh. Can't wait so to give you a big fun. old hug when we meet in Vegas very soon. It's going to be a lot of fun. It'll be memorable. Yes, it sure. will. Yeah, especially since sure. it's your first time. I know. And Michael's. Woo. Could get crazy. <laughs> Bye, Tom. Great. Great. Bye, Thanks Tom. Thank you so we'll much. Take care. Thank you so much for tuning in. We go live Fridays at 2 p.m. Eastern. That's 11 a.m. Pacific. Of course, you can join our Facebook user group. Uh, it's called PTZ Optics Pals. Yeah, facebook.com slash group slash PTZ Optics Pals. If you're still watching and you haven't subscribed, don't forget to subscribe and like this video uh, to stay informed. We have a lot of cool stuff coming up. We've got another channel called Stream Geeks. You should check it out if you haven't already. Um, we're going to be, a lot of the things we were talking about today in this show uh, is developing over there. So a little bit more of a live streaming dive over there. Yeah. On this it's channel, be a, fun one. a little bit more of a um, camera line tutorial. So Technical. don't forget uh, don't forget to subscribe to Stream Geeks as well. All right, guys, we'll see you next time. Thanks. Take care.